Thank you, Lord Jesus. Merci, Thank Jésus. you, Lord Jesus. Merci, Seigneur Jésus. We are so grateful to be here tonight. I can tell that this city is taken for the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this city is taken for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are grateful for God to be here. And we want to bless God for the father and the mother of this house. Pastor Elu and First Lady. Wherever they are, may the Lord bless and increase them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. The church is the image of its leader. L'église là c'est image leader ça yo. It's my first time meeting the great man of God. C'est première fois me faire rencontre avec homme de Dieu ça. And you're sitting in this atmosphere I can say you are under the right leadership. Amen. Amen. We want to bless God for the entire leadership of this church. Uh, my big brother is coming in a minute, Apostle Moses. May the Lord bless him. And we want to thank God for all the men and the women of God. God bless you, Bishop. God bless, you. God bless everybody. We bless God for your lives. In Jesus' name. My name is Apostle Shamil Gezer. We are from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. We, we send you greetings from my wife and my church. And we are so impressed. Next time, I'm coming with all the people from my church to Amen. 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 There is a word the Lord has laid upon my heart. Thank you, worship team. You may take your seat. Put your hands together for the best worship team of Miami. There is a word the Lord has placed on my heart. Everybody open your Bible with me to Ephesians chapter 6. You can play strings for me. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. And we're going to read verse 1 till 3. First one. Th you can read it for me. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, uh -huh. for this is right. Uh -huh. Honor your father and mother, uh -huh. which is the first commandment with a promise, uh -huh. that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7. On allez dans Hebrews 7, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7. Hebrews 7, verse 7. Now, now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Tell your neighbor, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Dis-moi qui boit contre la bénédiction pour plus grand par ces mondes qui recevoir. And now let's go to our last scripture, Judges chapter 2, verse 10. Judges 2, verse 10. Judges chapter 2, verse 10. When all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Verse 11. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bells. 12. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Papa, Amen. Clap your hands one more time. I'm going to speak on a message I entitled Picking of the Mantle. Picking up the mantle. Uh, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is the only commandment that came with a promise. And listen to what the Bible says. That if you obey your parents in the Lord, your days on earth will Will be long. There are three types of fatherhood. Your heavenly father. 
your biological father papa qui fait ici, sous terre, hein? and your spiritual father Et papa spirituel. now listen very carefully très bien. your biological father gave birth to you papa qui sous la terre, qui te fait, là? but your spiritual father opens the gate of your destiny Mais papa spirituel, destiny your biological father gives birth to you papa qui sous terre, lui qui, qui naît, qui ba, qui ba vie. but your spiritual father opens the door for your destiny Mais papa spirituel, pour the bible says obey your parents in the lord obey non, Seigneur, yeah? so that your days on earth may pour be long now listen very carefully the future of a son is in his father and the legacy of a father is in his son today I'm speaking about amalgamation or a unification of two generations the legacy of a father is in his son. But the destiny of a son is in his father. The benefit of honoring your father, your days on earth may be long. Pastors, we have a problem in the body of Christ. Today we see a new young prophet rising. Two years later, he get caught up in a scandal. Today we see a new young pastor rising. Prophesying. Healing the sick. Gathering the crowd. Next year we don't hear him anymore. And listen. The reason why we see so many young preachers appearing. And they get caught up in scandals. It's because the key to longevity. Is not the anointing. The key to longevity is not being gifted. But the key to longevity is to honor your father. The Bible says, Honor your parents in the Lord. That your days on earth will be long. Miami, listen to me. Prophetically speaking, God is raising another generation in Miami. And this generation is not the generation of hype. Today they are on Facebook. Tomorrow they disappear. Today they are on Instagram. Tomorrow they disappear. This generation is a generation that will last. Because they do not only understand the anointing. They understand the principle of honor. Let me tell you something about honor. Honor is a key. There is a door standing in front of you. They will introduce your ministry to America. There is a door in front of you. They will introduce your ministry to Africa. And the key to this door is not the anointing. The key to this door is not the gift. The key to this door is honor. By the special grace of God, I have preached this gospel in about 25 countries. And all around the world, I see anointed people going nowhere. 
Anointed pastors going nowhere. Anointed women going nowhere. Anointed men going nowhere. And I'm going to tell you why. The key to longevity in ministry is not the ability to prophesy. The key to longevity in ministry is not the ability to lay hands upon the sick. But the key to longevity in ministry is the key of honor. This is why even in this church you have people they are here for five years their life is going in a cycle and then you have people they are here for five months the heaven is open the difference is not in the anointing it is in your honor and your level of submission to the leadership of this house listen to me a lot of people will say i leave the church because i don't grow i leave my position because i don't grow let me tell you you have a part to play in your growth you have a part to play in growing in your mental and you have a part to play in receiving the mantle of your father whenever i pour water i cannot pour side words I cannot pour upwards. Whenever I pour, I pour downwards. That's the issue. You have a lot of prophetic people who cannot submit. Apostolic people who cannot submit. Anointed people who cannot submit. So what is the problem? They are in this church but they go in a side because when the oil flows it doesn't flow upwards it doesn't flow sideways. when the oil flows it goes downwards there is a principle of elevation it is the principle of humility not the anointing not the gift there is a principle of elevation the bible say he that went up he first went down he that went up he first went down today people come to church if after one year they didn't preach they leave the church if after one year they are not the worship leader they leave the church if after one year they don't have a position they leave the church the bible say he that went up he first went down Between your prophecy and your promise, there is a process. And listen to me. Your prophecy reveals your future. Your process reveals your character. Ah! Your prophecy reveals your future. Your process reveals your character. Some of you have a prophecy that you are a prophet of a prophetess. But the process reveals that you are proud. The process reveals you need to be broken. Process reveals you need patience. The process reveals you need humility. 
between your prophecy and your promise there is a process and the process refuse your hearts refuse your character refuse your state of mind refuse your maturity God is raising a people that didn't just appear overnight they went through the process they went through the wilderness they were broken they were rejected they were spat upon listen to me the hour the body of Christ is in is an hour of the transfer of the mantles and anointing leaders if we look at the body of Christ prophetically generals are dying Cerullo has died Rainer Bonke has died Ora Roberts has died Maurice Cerullo has died T.B. Joshua have died and the problem is not those that have died you know what the problem is we are in a generation that ain't mature to pick up the mantles let me tell you something when a man of God dies he never dies with a mantle you don't hear what I say when a man of God dies his mantle begins to linger in the atmosphere looking for a in Miami that says I want the anointing more than a husband more than a man more than sex more than fame more than popularity what I really want I want an anointing on my life I want a mantle on my life what I really want I want the power come generals they have gone to be with the lord their mantles are over america looking for the church looking for the preachers looking for men and women whose desire ain't fame and popularity but whose desire is god use me use me use me use me Listen, the distance between you and the mantle is called honor. Mantles are not cheap. The principle for the mantle is called honor. The Bible says the lesser is blessed by the greater. There is a law in the kingdom. It is illegal to run for the new generation until somebody from the previous generation trained you ordained you laid hands on you and commissioned you that's the problem today there are Melchizedeks people they claim they are anointed they have no father they have no mother you are your own boss you are a bastard Today in the kingdom, the anointing has become something to brutalize people. My friend, there is a race to run and you cannot run without somebody laying hands upon you you cannot talk about Elisha without talking about Elijah you cannot talk about Joshua without talking about Moses you cannot talk about the apostles without talking about Jesus you cannot talk about Timothy without talking about Paul you don't talk about Benny Hinn without talking about Catherine Kuhlman you don't talk about Pastor Ela without talking about Apostle Maldonado who is your father who is your leader who is your mentor who trained you who laid hands upon you who ordained you who commissioned you
That's why this generation is in trouble. Too many gifted rebels, anointed rebels, prophetic rebels. The lesser is blessed by the greater. Who laid hands on you? Let me tell you, eh? There are places in the spirit you cannot enter until you can show the principality who your reference is. There are certain principalities in America that you cannot fight until you can show them your reference. Somebody say go deeper. Bishop, the Bible says when Moses with the prophetic anointing has certain battles you don't win by anointing you win by authority and rank when Moses went with the prophetic anointing to Pharaoh he said let my people go Pharaoh said show me who has sent you if I cannot see who sent you I will not listen to you there are places in the spirit certain powers and principalities in your family in America in Miami in Florida they cannot listen to you until you can show them your reference listen I know you are caught you know why principalities don't listen to you you, you are caught but you are not yet sent. It's a difference between the calling and the sending dimensions. This church will be a center of revival in Miami. And I'm going to tell you why. This church has an apostolic dimension. It's not a pastoral church. It's an apostolic and a prophetic church. And there is one dimension that comes with the apostolic. It is the sending dimension. The quality of an apostolic church is not how many people it seat. It's how many people it sent. I want to challenge the church in America. I want to challenge the church in America. How many people they should raise how many people they should train how many people they should send after three years Jesus raised 12 apostles America I'm speaking to the nation after 12 years your people ain't ready to be deacons I'm speaking to the nation after 12 years your people ain't ready to be elders but when Jesus took thieves prostitutes and criminals after 3 years they became apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. You shall be a center of revival. Ah, panimi atalaba sida branda kapaha. You shall be a center of revival. You shall train up prophets here. You shall train up apostles here. You shall train up evangelists here. You shall train up intercessors. There is a certain place in the spirit you can only enter if you can show them your reference. Ask your neighbor who is your father. Uh, 
Hey. Let me tell you. Certain places. Access is only given. Access you buy. If you can show them your father. There are certain places. Certain platforms. Certain churches. Certain doors. Certain platforms. You will only enter. When you can show them a reference. Not the anointing. Not the gift. The reference. And the Bible says. When David killed Goliath, now you had little David with the head of Goliath. When they saw David with the head of Goliath, they didn't say, For how long did he pray? They didn't say, For how long did he fast? They looked at David, they said, Whose son is he? Hey, there is a platform. God is calling your toe. But you need a reference. They will ask you. She is anointed. But whose daughter is it? He is anointed. But his son is it. The anoint the, the mantle. It has principles. We have become a weak church. Because we are gifted. And rebellious. Gifted. But we don't have principles. Gifted. But we are arrogant. Some of you are here. You don't talk with somebody in your own church. Some of you are here. You still have attitudes. Some of you are here. You still have pride in the heart. You think you are better than everybody. Think you are more anointed than everybody. That's why the glory is slowly departing from the Western church. I came as an apostle and a prophet to preach the word of the Lord over the land. There is a mantle in the atmosphere. The mantle of the late Catherine Kuhlman. The mantle of the late Maurice Cerullo. The mantle of the late Smith Wigglesworth. The mantle of the late T.B. Joshua. The mantle of the late Reinhard Bonke. But the prize is honor. Humility, prayer, fasting, holiness, righteousness. So many men are in the grave with a mantle. Because the next generation is anointed but lacks principles. The Bible declares Elisha died. And years later, another man died. They put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And the man came back alive. Because the mantle was on the bones of Elisha. You know why? Kayasi was a rebellious son. That's why Elisha couldn't transfer the mantle. He, he died with the mantle. There are two people in church. Elisha's and Kayasi's. There are two things you can receive from a man of God. The double portion or leprosy. Uh, the double portion or leprosy. I prophesy 30 minutes from now a double portion shall fall upon your head. I speak and I prophesy 30 minutes from now a double portion shall fall on your head. I prophesy. Oil shall fall upon your head. A fresh prophetic mantle. A fresh apostolic mantle. The grace to heal. The grace to deliver. The grace to prophesy. Receive it right now. I shall receive it right now. I shall receive it right now. Take it on my left. Take it on my right. Take it in the back. Take it in the front. Somebody shot fire.
There is something in the atmosphere. There is something in the atmosphere. It's called the mantle. It's called the mantle. And let me tell you something. You cannot deal with certain demonic powers in your family. You cannot deal with certain demonic powers in Miami. In this territory. Until you have a mantle on your life. Ah, the Bible says. When Elijah. And Elisha crossed the Jordan. Elijah didn't wait for the boat. He, he took his mantle. He began to beat the river. And the river opened. When Elijah went up, his mantle began to look for a man that surfed that prayed, that fasted, and the mantle of Elijah came upon Elijah. Now Elijah had to cross. And listen, Elijah could not open the Jordan by his own authority. <laughs> he took the mantle and said, Where is the God of Elijah? I'm going to tell you why. In the Jordan, you guys are from Haiti, so you understand. There was the Marine Kingdom with, with Jezebel, Le Fighten, the Queen of the Coast, demonic spirits, spirits of lust, spirits of seduction. The reason why Elijah had to call on the name of Elijah. It's because the principality of the sea did not recognize the authority of Elisha. It only recognized the authority of Elijah. The power of the water recognize the mantle. You need a mantle. You know why? There is food in your family. It won't respond to a cute girl. It won't respond to a cute lady. Or a handsome boy. It only responds to a man with a mantle. There are powers in your family. They don't break by handsome boys. And pretty ladies. They only respond to people with mantles. Young people, don't look for titles. Look for mantles. Young people, don't look for titles. Look for mantles. A prophetic mantle. An apostolic mantle. A mantle of revival. I need a mantle on my life to deal with Jezebel. I need a mantle on my life to deal with the spirits of the water. I need a mantle on my life to open the eyes of the blind, to open the ears of the deaf, to make the left to walk. I need a mantle. Tell your neighbor you need a say you need a mantle. Uh, say you need a mantle. Come on, say you need a mantle. Listen, listen we, need, we need apostolic leaders. The, 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 the thing that apostles do, we don't only preach, we don't only teach, we raise sons, we raise daughters. It doesn't matter their past. We don't see your past, we see your potential. So, we need a restoration of real apostles because we have to raise a new generation a generation of apostles and prophets that can stand in America and deal with the entertainment in your church deal with the witchcraft in your church deal with the lies of the church America there was a time 
where God raped men in this country. The shook America. There was a time in your country when there was revival. There was a time in this country where there was a healing anointing. An anointing of miracles. But America, you have replaced the glory for entertainment. America, you have replaced the glory for the love of money. America, you have replaced the glory for popularity. God is raising you for America to clean the mess in the church. I say God that raised you in America to clean the mess. Once upon a time, we had a Catherine Kuhlman in this nation. We had a Jack Coe in this nation. Once upon a time, we had an Oral Roberts in the nation. But what happened? We replace the mantle for title. We replace the anointing for education. And we replace the preacher for the entertainer. I came as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you prophetically there are mantles in the atmosphere. There is a mantle in the atmosphere. Do not chase titles. Chase mantles. Do not chase fame. Chase mantles. Don't chase money. Chase mantles. Don't chase popularity. Chase mantles. Is there a man in America that still want the glory of God on their life? Is there a woman in America that still want the glory on their life? America, America, God is crying over you. God is crying over you. America, America, the Holy Spirit is grieved over your nation. America, America, the Holy Spirit is grieved. 